soon after as the Vatican and even uh, Constantine, who gave birth to Christianity, knew that these underground pagan cults, some of the most, uh, uh, you know, e evil ones dedicated to gods that were really from ancient times, like uh, the modern Christians called Satan or Lucifer. Stay there. Let's talk about it when we come back. Good call. Leo Zagami is our guest. After he leaves us at the bottom of the hour, I'll get into all the other incredibly important world news, economic news, political news, science news. It's amazing. I haven't gotten to about, about half of it yet. We're going to go to Nick, Dan, Jim, Sherry, Robert, and others. Now that the phone lines are up and working here in just a moment. Leo Zagami's book is available in English. You can find it on Amazon, you name it. Uh, the Last Pope, Leo Zagami. He's written 11 other books as well. And he has accurately predicted exactly what would happen. That they would have the Pope resign, that they would put a Jesuit in. They never had a Pope resign. And this was a takeover. And he lives right there in Italy. He's been working inside the Vatican for decades. He's been part of secret societies that are within the Vatican. And it's just unprecedented. This is the big sign that world government's coming in. Last night I went out with friends downtown to a pool buy some condos to barbecue and see the blood moon. There was too many clouds to really see it. But I've seen one of the others this year. It's pretty spectacular. A full eclipse of the moon. Yeah, five in one year. Won't even see another one until 2033. But waiting for it to happen, I had folks out there who I didn't know at the pool arguing with me saying, no, it's Jewish mysticism. It's the, you know maybe the end of the world, the start of the tribulation. I had folks on the elevator arguing with me. And, and, of course, I have the news blaming me saying I said the blood moons were the end of the world and the Shemitah. I never said any of that. Just like I never said um, Jade Helm was the end of America or gun confiscation. It was further conditioning, like TSA on the streets. But this is how they lie and misrepresent. But I got to tell you, I've been on air 20 years. I've never seen the media lie like they lie now. I mean, they will really lie. They'll get up on the news and say, everyone loves the Pope. He's not political. People shouldn't criticize him. Just lockstep both parties. When the truth is, most Catholics I talk to are, are, are horrified. Are horrified. But, but now is it okay to say Christ failure on the cross? Now is that okay? I want to go back to your calls with Mr. Zagami. Nick in Tennessee, you're on the air. Go ahead. Um, hey, Leo, uh, I was wanting to know your thoughts on the question, did the Roman Empire never fall and just became the Vatican? Thanks. I think I partly answered this question before because it definitely it is, uh, like the listener said, a, a continuation of uh, the uh, Roman Empire that then became the sacred Roman Empire. But in any case, the Vatican has kept that core of knowledge that was there since the ancient times, since the times uh, even Julius Caesar got together with Cleopatra. I mean, Rome has uh, this occult knowledge, and the Jesuits make it really clear. Uh, I wrote an article about it for InfoWars called um, describing Jesuitenberg, these caves near the city of Maastricht, uh, built by Jesuits, which uh, basically include a variety of gods from all the traditions, worshipped by the Jesuits in their spare time. Uh, it took a hundred years to build these caves, and what is inside there is much more astonishing than any logic you can find around the world. I mean, it's incredible. The imagery, the detail, and everything was done by the Jesuits who conducted until 1960 uh, rituals in these caves. And now are, it's possible to visit them if you book. Uh, sure, let me try to answer that question for Nick. Uh, after the official fall of Rome and the final sacking in 410 by the Visigoth chieftain Alaric, Rome then switched, because it had been the Eastern and Western Empire, switched totally to Constantinople, uh, which is now Istanbul today, in Turkey, and the church gave its allegiance and vice versa to the Byzantines. In 800, with the crowning of Charlemagne by the Pope, and the ancient Roman term Europa, or the goddess Europa, then uh, Rome gave its power to Europa, or Europe, and that's the switch, and then the rebirth truly of the Roman Empire under the Holy Roman Empire. Correct, Leo Zagami? 
correct that we go into the 1950s and we arrive uh, basically to the Treaty of Rome and to the modern European Union uh, that is an emanation of uh, this uh, sacred Roman Empire. Which is a project of the Catholic Church post-World War II. And this project uh, wants to amplify itself, uh, of course, taking over also the U.S., uh, the rest of the world, and this uh, one-world uh, government. That, and since uh, you've been in the, in, the, in the, what you call the light side of the Illuminati, in the Vatican, which there's all these Illuminati systems around the world, but you're, you're confirmed in that, the photos, the, the admissions. I mean, they admit that you've been part of their group because of family ties. You believed it was for good, for the light. You found it was bad, went public, so people can't judge you. There is supposedly the whole Rosicrucian, Merovingian, secret Atlantis breeding programs of the Masons uh, and George Washington and all the rest of them to get over here and to get away from the Vatican that they believe had corrupted the ultimate gain uh, to, 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 to empower humanity and that they were the real Illuminati led by Thomas Jefferson, who then, of course, helped engineer the French Revolution and all that mass murder, but he then turned against it and said it was wrong. Washington fought it from the beginning. Uh, so, so what about the new Atlantis versus Rome? Has it the new Atlantis, America, and uh, the goddess Columbia, hasn't that been at odds with the Vatican and Europa, two different cults, or is it really the same cult? Well, uh, as you know, the Jesuits uh, came around uh, more or less 500 years ago with Ignazio Loyola, and their uh, their the whole uh, uh, reason to be, to be the Jesuits was to actually infiltrate the growing uh, dissent for the Catholic Church, uh, what became known as Protestantism. Uh, all those people who thought they were rebelling, in the end, they will be infiltrated. And uh, one thing about the Jesuits, they don't infiltrate uh, a cult, a religion, to deactivate it. They simply take it over. And, and so they, I mean, they take over uh, maybe the Christian evangelical church as they take over the satanic one. For them, the important thing is to take over every single human creed. That's right. But separately, a lot of Protestants don't know that the Rosicrucians and other people were there deeply was, behind was creating the whole Protestant movement. And, and it looks exactly. like there was a battle against the Catholic Church at one point, which they would say was evil. And then the Jesuits didn't go try to defeat that to save the Catholic Church. They actually took it over and then took over the Catholic Church and now want to control both wings of the system. They also infiltrated the Rosicrucians. The Rosicrucians were actually good at one point when some of them also devised, you know, based on the New Atlantis of Sir Francis Bacon, the idea also that came into life with 1776 with the foundation of the United States of America, this idea of freedom from the other side, uh, you know. From exactly, Europe. but George Washington smelled it out, double-crossed the Illuminati, and that's why America got, at least uh, for about 100 years, it shot. Yeah, and the chaos uh, was, of course, created the moment you rebel to this system. But they are always in the midst, you see, and they manage uh, the Rosicrucian tradition. At one point, Elias Ashmore, who was uh, uh, in the 16th century, well, one of the maximum representatives, he said that these uh, Rosicrucians were getting infiltrated by witch doctors, by witchcraft. And this witchcraft came from the Jesuits, you know. They went basically to those uh, true Christian mystics that wanted the sun Thing that brought them closer to God and offered them instead a diabolical creed that could bring them immediate uh, Sure, exactly. The, the original Rosicrucians undoubtedly really were about human empowerment, the opposite of Satanism or Luciferianism, and that's why they had to be taken over. And then what we think of as Rosicrucians today is just Satanism. Yes, because the Rosicrucian Manifesto that uh, was uh, basically published in the 1620s by this guy Colland was actually completely opposed to the Vatican and attacked very harshly the Vatican. And this manifesto were actually put in various cities in Northern Europe, creating a, a, a lot of interest towards this new, uh, new. Actually, the Rosicrucians claim to be very old tradition. The Rosicrucians claim to basically be those original high priests that were rebelling to this system that was taken over by the Vatican. Uh, Nick, do you have anything else you'd like to add listening on 1600 AM? Uh, thanks. Um, well, do you, I, I've heard stuff about the Council of Nicaea, or how you pronounce that word. Um, you know, a lot of Christianity was changed, like... Uh, it was possible that Jesus Christ himself was a vegan. And 
the Roman Empire, whatever you want to call it, changed a lot of Christianity's pure teachings into something totally different to fit their doctrine. So what are y'all's thoughts? Well, you know, they found a lot of the ancient scrolls from the scribes, and the King James pretty much matches up from what I've seen. But some whole books that they didn't agree with did get disappeared. I don't think the text itself has been manipulated that much, but there are whole books that disappeared. You, uh, Liam? Yes. Yeah, they decided to destroy approximately 500 books that talked about the life of Jesus because it didn't fit with the, the system. Of course, if the book was showing a Jesus that was rebellious to society, was somebody who could challenge the empire in a way that they disliked, or maybe was teaching some secret knowledge that they didn't want to give to the public, they just took this book away. I mean, definitely there has been at least officially a few, but maybe many more books that were completely destroyed at that time. And remember that for hundreds of years, only the people from the church were capable of reading these books, because the majority of people in society were not capable of reading. So uh, only the aristocrats and the church had this knowledge. And now they're bringing us back to that today, the complete dumbing down. Thank you, Nick. Great questions. We're skipping this network break. Only this one. Dan in Illinois, you're on the air. Okay, we'll come uh, back. To yeah. yeah, go ahead. Yes, this is Bible Dan with his Bible in his hand. And I ran into Jacardi Jackson and uh, Paul Joseph Watson at the Washington uh, train station in disguise. So I'm letting you know that the video I'm going to post of All right, hold meeting. on. Paul Joseph Watson is in England, so that's not true. You mean, you mean David Knight and Jacardi Jackson? Yeah, David Knight. David Knight, the guy with the beard, mustache. Sure, if you got a serious okay. question, go ahead and go to it, sir. All right, uh, I got two. Uh, what is the Pope talking about uh, saying that uh, government officials are, can oppose gay licenses? He just said, uh, essentially, Kim Davis was right to deny gay license to gays. And then my second question uh, the Da Vinci Code. Uh, essentially, Constantine knew that the church Christianity was going to take over, so what he did was he created the office of Pope, but the Pope is really the emperor. Is that correct? I appreciate your call, Dan. Um, let me go to Leo Zagami to, to try to answer that. First off, I just want to say this. Um, Looking at this, and I'm not trying to give this Pope a pass, but I don't want to be sitting here judging people being nasty, which I have been because I'm so threatened by all this, and it's just so obviously over the top. Is the media cherry-picking what the Pope says? I'm trying to read more of what he says, because he will say, hey, gay marriage hurts the family. Hey, uh, people have a right to conscience to say no. Hey, radical Islam is doing some bad stuff. Uh, hey, the family's important, but then it seems like he says these horrible things, too, that the media picks up and magnifies. So he is saying these bad things, but then I find out he says some good things as well, but then that stuff doesn't get picked up. So it is very Jewitical. Uh, I guess that's what the Jesuits do is they talk out of both sides of their mouth or what's going on, Leo Zagami, and then his whole question about Constantine. Well, they just give a little, he just gives a little bone here and there, you know, to satisfy the conservatives and the growing dissent that is in the church. I mean, this morning, the newspapers in Italy were talking about the fact that the Pope has not said anything about the gay marriages in the U.S. and that he hasn't opposed anything. And actually, the way of this Pope is basically, oh, well, let's see what we agree on and not what we disagree on. And uh, we should just uh, not point so much on the complex doctrine but on the beauty of Jesus. And that's it. When he says that, then he can say anything. And people believe him. Well, then he says that right. Jesus so, failed. He said Jesus was a failure. Yeah, well, he says Jesus is a failure when it does, you know, when he wants. But then when he suits him, he says uh, instead that we shouldn't look at the complex doctrine, but just at the beauty of Jesus. So Jesus is just this beautiful thing that I don't know. It's not anymore. It doesn't have any sure. more the value. For folks that don't know, in the real satanic masses that they've had for th over a thousand years, they talk about Christ broken, defeated, failing at the cross, dead. I mean, 
Uh, when I saw him, the look in his eyes when he said that, I got chills. I mean, it was, he's not stupid. He knows exactly what that was. And that was hardcore. Sure. And you know, you mentioned Castel Gandalf. And 